Du, 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 du. On your mark. Doot. Here we are. Nice to see you here, guys. Yeah, thank you. Nice to, nice to be there. Thanks for having yeah. us. Thank you for you. You find the time and energy and everything because I know your schedule is crazy. It's crazy busy and and I really appreciate like to come here and have a little bit chat with a with a with a friends and athletes. It's really nice to have you. Yeah, thanks so, for having us. Yeah. So how are you guys? Good. Yeah, not too bad. Not a little tired. Bad. We raced yeah. yesterday. But. Yeah. You had both race or. Vincent, we were racing against each other yesterday yeah. in Bagnoles, <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And yes, you were racing in Cartera, French Grand Prix, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, in Quiberon. Yeah, and yeah. How did it go? It went well, yeah. Yeah? Um, yeah, it was a good race. I finished second, so I was happy with it. Yeah. yeah and our team finished That's first. really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, good. it's pretty special. Yeah. After um, a few not so good races, I was happy to have another. Oh, one, not so, so good races! <laughs> I think you had <laughs> amazing season behind. Yeah, yeah. Like to finish fourth on a World Series, that's 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 pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Overall, you you, you must be you must be happy about that. Yeah, okay, I'm if really if you happy. if you see your boyfriend like <laughs> he's winning the World Series, like you feel like oh this is not enough like he can he is he motivate you and inspiring you to do better yeah definitely i mean i i see like the things that he the little things that he does like in in training or like just his attention to detail yeah um along with like his commitment to training it's like really, yeah I so what what, what exactly was is inspiring what did you learn from him like what was the details like you would never thought <laughs> about what oh was gosh. like like oh this is this is really doing to people is that something like that yeah yeah i mean i think it's just a little bit of everything um like he's very committed to his training and i mean i always have been but um mm. just to see like the little things he pays attention to whether yeah. it's like something like um, him rewatching a race um, okay. afterwards, or oh, really? or like um, fixing something he does in transition. Oh, um, really? Just like these little thing, attention to detail, I think um, is interesting, and it's something that I never thought of before. So, yeah, um, that's pretty cool. So but, now, now um, you watch watch together the races after, and you I'm, you pick in your mistakes. He watches his races. I really yeah, hate, yeah. Then you then I you watch. I hate rewatching my races. Yeah, actually. me too. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's something that I need to start doing now because of yeah. like how the female races have been developing with like Laura and Jess. Yeah. Um, and I think it will help us keep these breakaways going, and it'll help yeah. me stay in them and not get dropped. Yeah. So. Now, now Flora is back, so yeah. it's, it's 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 really good for you because it's even one power horse. Uh, stronger uh, like is, is supporting you to to have better overall uh, race right yeah yeah I really enjoy racing with you know people that push the pace from the start of the race and don't yeah. just kind of like sit in and wait until the run like I think it's similar to like you and Vince like we're we all come from a yeah. swimming background yeah and so we want that to make a difference so when yeah. you have people that are motivated on the bike to like you know also have that make a difference then yeah. you know you're racing a triathlon instead of just like kind of waiting around to to run a race which yeah is, yeah you know, why I'm doing that's really, sport. really cool <laughs> like to see it, it's a little bit switch uh last two three years like the female race is more more breakaway mm -hmm. like it used to be and the males uh is more together now right yeah yeah, yeah. it's i think it's like depends of Basically, with racing, we saw with the brownies, yeah. we had a, yeah. like a lot of breakaways, and now with Flora and Katie for the girls, they're, yeah. they're doing a bit more. But that's 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 what I also like with Taylor. That's why, like I, I told her, you you have to push like from start to finish. That's how you're gonna kick out the good runners from from the group yeah. or, or like let them away from you. So that's 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 really good, and I I prefer that that someone maybe finishing second but gave like. 
everything and was uh, like more acting on the race than just yeah. like sitting on the back or waiting or waiting for people to doing the work. I mean, yeah, yeah. by the end, if you're second, but you can be proud of what you what you give. I mean, that's that's the nicest feeling, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like <coughs> when you were talking about this, like it exactly went in my mind. Like yesterday race, like you were. Uh, like it was quite obvious that probably it will come together, mm. but really, really tried like to make the difference. And from the start, we were quite pushing on the bike, mm. and we hope that it will be the different. But also, like you, you were like with Mario, the strongest runner. Yeah. But you really tried. Even Mario came to our group. Like you both were on the front and and trying to make different and don't don't like you didn't really too too much sit down and just wait for what's gonna yeah, happen yeah, yeah. and you were you were you were you were very active even if it was lots of people coming in there yeah i mean you you're training for doing a triathlon so you're doing yeah. to you're training for swim bike run if you yeah, if you're yeah. going to a race saying okay i hope the swim and the bike i can stay hidden the mostly the more possible and just run as fast as i could but you better stay in bed and just going, <laughs> yeah. going running yeah. i mean that's not what we pay what we be pay for and yeah so, yeah yeah, I mean, I, I better be ready for every kind of scenario. I mean, we, yeah. you never know what's going to happen at Worlds or Olympics or whatever. Maybe they're going to be a breakaway, maybe not. So you have to yeah. be maybe the best in the three disciplines. Please. And I think that's what also really helps me for races like Super League when every weakness mm. is like really like show, show, show off because of the, yeah. like the multiple like things you have to do like getting back uh, yeah. on the, at the swim after the run it's really like it's really hard if you're not a swimmer and if you don't practice it in racing don't don't practice as pushing hard swim bike run every every day and every race you you never know what it costs to to do it yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah i mean yesterday was a good race uh, that was a walk up so it's just like a race you can take it a bit like a bit a bit more chill out and yeah try to just do your thing so yeah obviously i know I was one of the best runners with Mario and Mario was like maybe less than 10 seconds back so if if I don't push straight I can't really I can't really drop him straight so yeah, he, yeah. he was there and then after I saw him working so I was like yeah if he works I'm gonna work we, we have to work so yeah. and be equal when we start the run that's that's yeah. how we see who's the best who's the strongest and that's I mean that's sport and that's what we love with sport it's not it's about who hide the most is but who is the strongest on the day yeah yeah it's really cool that uh that you came with mario mm. after last weekend from lausanne mm. to come on the world cup it was more like in spain close to france race so you came together and competing again why, why did you decide to to come in here and not coming to quebron for uh, example i don't know i mean we we train we kind of train every day to to be the best of the world and you, you're racing WTS to race the best athletes so I was like okay what's what's next I want to race like the yeah. World Cup and there will be a good field there will be strong athletes and I may am I gonna be world champ or second in the world but okay I, I still want to race so you were you, you were decided before even Lausanne you come yeah, in here yeah, so yeah. whatever happened yeah you come in I really here wanted to, to come and I did not even yeah. know I mean I knew Mario has good chance to race here, but I did not even know yeah. that I was just like, okay, I want to race. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, trained yeah. for racing, yeah, so yeah, I just yeah. want to race. And what's yeah, the highest course. level? Okay, World Cup, I'm going to race a World Cup. And also you had really long the preparation for the one event. Yeah. You didn't do Tokyo, so you, you wanted to use the, the training yeah, yeah, you that's had. It, that's it, I spent seven yeah. weeks in attitude uh, and yeah. training we train like with mario every day yeah like side by side for three sessions a day for seven weeks yeah. so you just want to race and um, yeah after lausanne I, I told my coach joel okay now if i can race every weekend i will race every weekend yeah. i just want to keep racing yeah and like keep the form going until super league and everything yes so yeah banyoles was perfect i mean um staying in girona is is yeah. awesome and it's just next door that, that was funny to just yeah. put the bike in the back of the car and just drive yeah. into the race like a like, home race yeah, almost. I was like going to original mm -hmm. race and yeah. yeah yeah but that, that was good fun uh good race with mario that was yeah that was to be honest one of my with emberg one of my favorite race of the year oh really yeah, yeah that was good i mean when you train with a guy and you just have a good battle during a race yeah i mean after 3k we were just like okay 
that's that's just like training. Like, it really, you, you, did you feel like that? Yeah, that was a bit like this. Yeah, yeah. that was that was funny. Huh? That was really that was really like this. Huh? But yeah, and then good. and then you you were waiting or or Mario was pushing on from the start or um, how was it developing? Obviously, I didn't see it because I was racing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Ma- Mario pushed a bit the first K, and. Um, after after maybe one k, I took the lead and and tried to push a bit harder, and we, we dropped the other guys. But yeah. as soon as I as soon as I, as I saw that, I was like, okay, now you just have to keep like a really high pace, or Mario will attack you and drop you. So just yeah. just keep it as long as you can. Yeah. And if he doesn't attack, it just mean he can't. He can't. Yeah. Yeah. So he tried once or twice, and every time I just like keep one shoulder in front of him and just okay. like him behind. <laughs> so you were on the front, so you didn't yeah. allow him to go, come across. Like, yeah, yeah that's it. Every time he just came around, I was just like, no, nah, not now, not now. <laughs> okay. until, until he really tried with maybe 500 minutes to go. And I was like, oh, if, he, if he's going now, yeah, he, will on, he only has like one bullet. So yeah, I, I yeah, just yeah. have to stay with him and attack as fast and as hard as I could that's with 300 minutes to go. Okay. And I mean, we did that so much in training. Uh, yeah, so, mean, so you know what, what your weapon and his strong point where you can attack him, where yeah, he can attack you, yeah, right? kind of. But you know that that's good because sometimes when it's f- for you, it's nice. That's, I mean, yeah. when it's on your side, it's nice. But like yeah. in Hamburg, I was yeah. like really in between like, okay, I have to go now. It's a bit early, but I have to go now to drop Mario, to drop Yelligins, to drop yeah. this guy that I train with. Yeah, there is too much but, question marks. But the thing is, if I go now, <coughs> Jake can beat me. Yeah. So you're like, ah, what I'm going to do? Because I know the weakness. They know my weakness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just like, okay, just the instinct. And I went and I went all oh. out with 300 minutes to go and Jake beat me. Yeah. But yeah, now I know. So I'll try yeah. another thing next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, but it's do, do, you do, do you practice in like... In a, in a training go that hard because I know Joel Filio is always or I heard many times like in a training you're not trying to go all out and you yeah. you more uh, control you don't use your ego and yeah, no, no, not we, sh- we, showing up so you don't yeah. you can't you, can you really tell like no I'm not really but you know obviously you can you can tell Jake is really fast when yeah. we're doing like track session like 600s or 800s and this guy is putting like 62 every lap you know yeah. you know he can sprint yeah, yeah, yeah. and um but we never know yeah we never know all out joel is really yeah. in control you have to win with you in your group when you have five guys that can win a world series oh, it's you, crazy <laughs> yeah you it's have crazy. to you have to control them and yeah, yeah. i think he's he's a, for me he's a pretty good coach really good for yeah. what he's doing training wise yeah but wow, his, his way to like manage the eagles and the athletes, yeah. that's, that, that, super, that, that's, why made, that's what made the success for me. Yeah, it's super impressive, right? Yeah, like, making the people working together yeah. instead of fighting. Fighting yeah, against each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, 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 that's what he's good at, I think, really. Yeah, it's pre- it must be like from outside view, like like to to don't as you said to don't use the ego like don't race in in the training and mm. and to be really controlled and then do it in a uh, and and still use the the other other athlete to push you and find the perfect balance like okay i'm i'm leaving like this is too much do you do you feel like sometimes like this like in a training like Okay, this today is not my day. I'm just going a little bit more steady than they they go. Like mm. you see, like depends, like maybe last three hundred meters or three three reps before finish. You feel like ah, this is gonna be too much. So can yeah. can you say in yourself like ba- basically um, basically I'm, like a, a like a normal session is like yeah we have we mostly build the session like mm-hmm. I don't know if we have like. 12 by 600 on the track, I mean, you will say, okay, the first one has to be this pace and the 12th has to be this pace. Mm-hmm. But you will also say it's 8 to 12. So basically, you have to also manage yourself, manage, yourself, manage your yeah. ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about say, like saying after 8, uh, no, I should push 4 more because these guys are doing 4 more. Yeah, yeah. But what if I'm completely wrecked tomorrow? So you also have to say, okay, no, today is not my day. I'll do 10, do 12. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, maybe I'll do 12 and you'll do 10. Yes. And yes. it's more like this. And 
I, I remember some days I was like not feeling good and during a run session I just told the guy okay I'm staying at the back I'm yeah. just like going like a caboose behind you and you're just doing the work and I'm just following because yeah. I can't really help you but tomorrow yeah. if I feel good I'll help you ask yeah of yeah. course it's Another more day. about give and take yeah because when every, everyone feels good we make like a we alternate like every I don't know if, if you have like a 6 by 400 or whatever we change like every 400 to mm -hmm. make sure like everyone is taking his pull and yeah. his turn e yeah. even if like someone is stronger than another one we just say okay mm -hmm. it's like this we share the work yeah. no matter if you were champion of we never won the yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just there is 6 with 6 it's one each Yeah. so that's pretty good because it's like everyone is equal there is no matter of yeah. world champion or whatever it's just yeah, like yeah, yeah. we're a group we share the work yeah, I saw, the, saw that. It's very impressive to see it. And you, you were training before uh, with, the, with the most of the runners in France, with really good runners. Mm -hmm. So it was a big difference of the, if the mindset for you, the training. Yeah, the, the, the culture is really different between track and field and triathlon. I mean, they're both um, individual sports. But yeah, track and field, well, it's, it's a bit different. There is a lot of like, there is more ego and there's a lot of mm. like, kind of, I, I would not say jealousy, but something that you, you don't want the other to succeed. So mm. it's more like if I can destroy you at the train, yeah. I'll destroy yeah. you. Yeah. And it's it's really different. I know like, what you mean. <laughs> yeah. When I, when I joined Joel, that's the, first, that, that, that's the first thing I told him. I was like, I want to help the guys. I know I can help them, yeah. so I want to help them because I know they will help me. And he say, my group, it, it's easy. You, you put something on the table, you take something from the table. Mm. It's given, taken. Yeah. If you take more than you give, you're hard. Yeah. So, I mean, when you know that, you know where you go. And yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, easy to, it's easy to work with this guy. And I mean, Mario, yeah. Jake, Yale, Martin. And you also, you also, I think, more appreciate like the environment when it's not used like too much competition and too much ego because you you more kind of feel like it's just my mates and we don't challenge like crazy challenge you know self yeah we yeah. just leave it for the race and then in the race we'll we'll smash it each other but yeah, yeah, yeah. but then you you feel more relaxed right and then each each training is more fun than than like a stress I yeah, think that yeah. that can be also like and it can be really stressful if if you just want to destroy the another person and yeah. they don't want to destroy you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you if you're going to like a training as you're going to a race, saying, "Well, I hope I will feel good," or they will like destroy me. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. not it's not how it happens. I mean, if like on the bike we we see that someone's struggling during the pass line, we're just saying, "Okay, that's good. You're doing a good job. Just take like shoulder pull." So okay. we, we, we're more trying to help him than like trying yeah, to drop yeah. him. So. That's that's really nice with the group, and it's also that we, I mean, we're traveling together, we twenty four seven together, like almost eleven months a year together. So yeah. you have to help each other, or you you yeah. can't sustain that. Like I, I mean, mean, everything for like traveling. If we have like little tips or whatever, it's it's more than just training and helping each other. Training, it's like yeah. more lifestyle when you want just like help the guys because if they feel good, if they relax, if they're in a good mood. Yeah, they will help you. They will be good for the group. So it's it's yeah. all about the group. And and your your life is much easier and happier. <laughs> I yeah, guess. that's it. I mean, if everyone's happy, the yeah. group is happy. The group is yeah. working well. Everyone is doing like good results. So it's just like yeah. pushing up, and that's that's what's going. Yeah, good. it's very cool. It's the same with the with the girls in your group. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, we have a good girls group dynamic. I mean, yeah, I think with like a group of female athletes it's like a little bit more difficult but yeah um yeah, I, that's I think, what i mean i heard like girls don't go but I think, always always well together yeah, i think our group is like the best you know mesh of like girls that you can get that really work together it like obviously we all have pretty different strengths and weaknesses um because I think we're not quite like as strong as like yeah. the men's group and yeah, which is like level mm -hmm. on the eve. Free discipline is really similar, right? Yeah, and yeah. yours is like and some is good swimmer, some is good yeah, ride. Yeah, cyclist. but I think uh, Paulo Sousa, the coach, yeah. our coach, does a good job of like 
putting us in like smaller groups yeah where we work together with those athletes like we're more comparable so like say a few athletes are like much stronger cyclists we'll do like we'll be split up into two groups so that we're you know helping each other and working together versus you know one person's like getting dropped from the bike so I think he does a good job of like managing different athletes strengths and weaknesses and putting us in like training sessions where we can like improve and help each other but also we're not you know um like everyone's working together versus like some girls are really struggling Mm. and others are just like oh this is too easy um but what i do like about the group is that i think everyone brings something to the table like yeah everyone also has a a weakness so um no matter. But you you seem to be don't have weakness. <laughs> <laughs> I when I joined Paula's group, my biggest weakness was definitely the run. The run. So, yeah. um, I think over time, just like you know, seeing what the stronger runners in our group do, um, mm. that has helped me become you know. Uh, but you a are much now. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. Um, like be able to like run at the caliber that I'm running now so yeah um it's obviously working for me and I think little by little you can see that it's working for most of the girls in the the group too um yeah yeah do you think it's because uh like this this season you had so consistent and really high like you start in Abu Dhabi you were second I think and you were like not you had the worst results it's like nine position in world series that's that's pretty crazy <laughs> yeah like, so be, be so consistent you both had like probably the most consistent year that's why you win no mm-hmm. and yeah yeah i think so yeah i think we both had the most <clears throat> consistent season out of yeah almost all of the athletes but what's um, what i mean for me what's what's impressive with taylor is that she's pretty new in triathlon yeah i mean in 2015 i was already on the podium for the world series and yeah. she did like a first world series yeah that's it 2015 yeah, i Chicago. don't even think i had done a world cup yet i had just yeah. done like yeah. chicago because it was <laughs> yeah really I, I mean yeah I, and then last year she was like eighth <laughs> overall this year fourth it's so crazy wow, that's, it's crazy that's, that's really yeah. quick progression like. this is this is so crazy for me like maybe you can you can tell a little bit your story how did you get to triathlon and because I know you were you you've been doing uh, lifeguard yeah I did competitions surf lifesaving like growing up I did um, like a like a kids camp called junior lifeguards in yeah. Australia it's called like nippers yeah, yeah. Um, and so I did that for fun during the summer and it was pretty competitive just though. for summer right yeah it was like group food it's not, swim, nothing so. like <laughs> we did when we were kids like no, swimming no. in a pool yeah taking the turns. <laughs> It's just playing in on the beach, it's right? <laughs> it, was like, it was pretty like it taught you a lot of like valuable lessons. Yeah, like as yeah. a kid and it taught you to like work hard and like, you know, if one person fails, the group fails and like mm. little things like this that I think I carried on to like other aspects of my life and mm. like into doing triathlon yeah. now. But it wasn't super competitive like like just a swimming. You 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 you've been not swimmer, like pool swimmer. Yeah. When I was really little, I did swimming, and okay. it got to the point where I hated it, so I quit for oh, really? like a few years. Why did you hate it? <laughs> I think because the chlorine it smells. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's too much chlorine. My hair turned yellow. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think I just, I think swimming is such a tough sport mentally. Like, yeah. I think if you don't feel like you're making the decision to do it, yeah. Um, you don't want to do it yeah. so I like came into it again in just before I went to university mm. and um, that was my decision and I liked it so much better than it and I swam in, at university while I was getting my yeah. degree and so in the summer I did why, why, did, why did you start swimming back then it's just like keep fitness or I think I or realized fo- that I kind of missed it. Okay. So um, I saw that I was still racing well in these like um, surf oh. life saving competitions. Okay. So yeah, it was kind yeah, of yeah. my motivation, like, yeah. oh, I can make like a world team for surf life saving. Okay. So yeah. I I did that, and then I was like, oh, maybe I can you know walk onto a university team or get a scholarship. Okay. So did so you get scholarship I, by swimming? I because I didn't. I went to 
I picked a school based on uh, my major, so yeah. I just walked onto this the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. SOM team. Yeah. But um, I am. That is more cool. Yeah. That is yeah. more cool. No pressure. Yeah. Yeah, and like you're not doing because the sport you're doing mm. because you're. Yeah, and I was one of the few degree. people that like made it the whole four years of. Without you know, swimming, because I think yeah. everyone else was just so burnt out. Um, oh yeah. From swimming, so. Because that was, that was you in cool. the USA, like lots of my friends I was swimming with, they they left to to US uh, for university, get they get scholarship there. So in Slovakia, yeah. lots of people like swimmers, it's like a pretty big goal, like mm. get good degree, get, a, yeah, get yeah. good scholarship and stuff. That's a huge motivation for going yeah. to college, you know. But I saw like. Be, they were really talented they did my friend she was olympian and stuff but she, when she went there like they use her so much for the for the for their competition yeah. all the disciplines yeah. so she was as you're saying like i can imagine it can burns you out yeah. like just it's because you you're playing for the university you're not playing for the bigger goal like uh, yeah, olympics or something like yeah, that. yeah if like you don't really want to do it then i think yeah. it's a lot harder at that level yeah so but yeah that translated into me doing triathlon my last year of university and oh really here i am <laughs> here you are <laughs> so you you just you just choose like okay i'm I'm gonna try triathlon why, um, why did you try triathlon I was like, did you see vincent in a telly <laughs> and say ah this guy is I, running pretty nice i think at one point <laughs> i did like see how like he was a swimmer turned triathlete and i was like oh that's pretty cool like i think yeah. i could do that but yeah um i never yeah like, really thought much <laughs> about it yeah. um but um my last year or my fourth year of university i studied abroad and i was like well what can i do to stay active and and like i don't know you know still enjoy like yeah, you know, like yeah. studying abroad in florence italy um so i I did a triathlon just before I left and then I, you know, just kind of casually started running and like I got a, I bought a bike and like would yeah. ride around Italy and I still was, was swimming a bit because I was, yeah. you know, preparing to race surf life saving mm. races. So I did that and I thought it was a really cool way to like, you know, learn about a new culture in yeah, a different yeah, yeah. way than most you know s- students study so what, what you, did you thought like you can do pretty good or you thought like, uh like this is just for fun it's most like i'm picking it just make it something learn something and um, and we'll see or you had in the mind like maybe i can be i, I can thought be I good could be all right like yeah. I, for a swimmer like i was definitely the best runner on my swim team because okay. swimmers really yeah, struggle yeah, yeah. with running usually yeah um but i was like oh we'll see like how it goes and from that one race i did just before i left a coach actually contacted me or my mm-hmm. parents while I was studying abroad and he started to like try to help me like with training and stuff yeah. like that so he knew I was like you know having a life but yeah. he also you know thought I had a lot of potential so yeah. when I came back to the US I did like this elite development race mm-hmm. and I earned my like elite card so it was, oh, nice. it was kind of like a really random sequence of events but yeah, yeah. um it was pretty cool and I don't think like I would have ever you know been in this sport if it wasn't for you know studying abroad and like this person like seeking me out to like yeah, yeah, do yeah. the draft legal triathlon like I didn't know anything about it no. so um, that's when I like started to like fall in love with doing three sports instead of you know just swimming in a just pool <laughs> so yeah. that was pretty cool so that was the start and then that was like when you did like 2013 2014 yeah i think i was finishing my degree so 2013 was when i studied mm-hmm. abroad and 2014 was my because last year because i saw first results in itu website it was 2014 okay is yeah. it right yeah, yeah i think it was 2014 because yeah. that was my last year of university so yeah, i think i yeah, went yeah. to like i don't know probably the sarasota yeah. race or yeah yeah like i think i think that's what i saw <laughs> Yeah, but that was like And a so shock. you you, you <laughs> build up from it. Like you did pretty well. Like pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I I had no idea what I was doing, but no. I mean, you have to start somewhere. So it was a a good stepping stone and a good experience and I've learned a lot since then from all these like little experiences along yeah. the way. 
you you learn pretty quick, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's pretty big inspiration for people like maybe age twenty, twenty one, twenty two, and they have some swim background because maybe you also lots of people asking you like like oh do you think I can still start yeah. to do it? Late? Is it too it's late? too late. Yeah. And and I always thought that like may if you don't do in swimming from seven you're done like yeah. <laughs> you know like you need to do it because the competition is so high and then you like lots of american females especially, especially females yeah. okay some males is there as well coming from running or swimming background and and yeah. break out but not that way like the females is crazy like when you yeah, Kate, uh, katie kirsten, kirsten and, all the girls yeah. is like wow like it's, it's so impressive. inspiration for for mm-hmm. other other girls even this like after uni because even in my country like they would say like after uni like you done or something done yeah. Sport, usually. Yeah, yeah usually and you just started so yeah. it's crazy it's, it's very different what i think we have uh, experienced yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's been doing it a lot longer than yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. some of you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not doing triathlon that long, uh, I mean long, but but not, like, I was swimming from seven or even yeah. earlier, and, and then I was doing triathlon maybe from 14 or 13, just for fun. Yeah. And then at 19, I, I said, okay, I'm, I'm fed up with the swimming, I'm doing triathlon. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how was your story? Um, history like you I start swimming yeah like six or seven I can't I can't yeah. remember really but my, my parents were like running a bit doing marathons or st- mm. some stuff so I, I I always run with them so they never they never swim like a competition no, no, no. just running my mom doesn't know how to okay. swim yeah and yeah. my dad learned when he was 40 yeah yeah so <laughs> <laughs> he still doesn't know <laughs> no still doing one iron man a year but he's oh really yeah, he's struggling with the swim wow so you inspired him uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's still struggling with the swim. He's a good runner, though. But, um, yeah, swimming until I was maybe 14 or something. Mm-hmm. And while well, I was a bit struggling with swimming, I was, like, yeah, kind of bored about doing only this. Yeah. yeah. So I got a contact by, um, <clears throat> like, the federation, the French Triathlon Federation. They say, oh, we just opened, a, like, a sports school uh, next to your house. If you want to join, try it. So I went for, actually I went for two weeks for um, a swim sport school in Mulhouse with like mm-hmm. all the, the good guy, like Amory Levo, he has mm-hmm. like an Olympic medal and all wow. these guys. And I, I, I stayed two weeks with them and after this I was like, no, I don't want to swim <laughs> for the rest of my life. <laughs> they were really nice, but it's just that, so I, no. It's just, yeah, the yeah, training yeah. was crazy. Yeah, like yeah. three hours swimming in the morning, three hours swimming in the afternoon. And yeah, three team. hours. I was like, no. So twenty k's per day. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So I was like, no, it's not for me. And then I went for a training camp for two weeks with this new uh, tri sports school, mm. and that's like when I really say, okay, that's that's what I want to do for, for like the rest of my life. And yeah. then I joined. really did you did you think like, okay, I want to do, really do it for the rest of my life? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, that was. Um, that was a bit after, um, I think that was the period of Athens for Olympic Games. Okay. And I saw Frederick Bello finish fifth. Yeah. Uh, Amish Carter won the race. Bivon Ducati second. And I was like, wow. Yeah. This is crazy. When I saw them on the podium, well, I was like, yeah, that's that's what I want to do. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I want an Olympic medal. I want to do this. And so that's when I really So they say, really inspired you yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to do like, it. Yeah, uh, like, Bivon Ducati is like a big, big, big inspiration for me. Oh, yeah, really? yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow, I, I like his running style and wow, mm. I really like him. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try to see where I can go. Yeah. So I joined this sports school. I did three years. So my three last year of school, actually, before I graduate. And after that, I just turned like, I say, okay, uh, I can go to uni or I can try, I can mm. really try to go professional. Um, I remember this day I told my dad, uh, okay, I'm not going to uni, I'm going to try to be a professional triathlete. And he said, that's not a job. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a job. That's not a job, that's what yeah. he says. So I was like, okay, now, uh, I mean, 
Uh, I need to earn my money. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you need to call Frederick Belovre if, if his real job or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was yeah. like, okay, I'm not gonna ask you money, no worries. I'm gonna do my things. Oh really? And Did yeah, you tell yeah, him like? So I joined. Actually, when I was 18, I like had a call from a French team, uh, which is Saint Genevieve, that I'm still with them now, 12 yeah. years after. And yeah. I say, okay, um, I need somewhere to sleep, and I need like someone to just pay me food and I will train all day long <laughs> so that's what I did uh, got world champion 2008 that was and in uh, Hamburg that was in Vancouver in Vancouver 2007 yeah. was Hamburg I got yeah. third and the year after yeah. I won and, I think uh, I remember yeah since that I mean get so you already had like after this performance really good confidence in yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. like okay I was like, I did. I'm pretty much on the top of the world in juniors. Yeah, that's but it. But that's just another step to go on yeah, seniors. Yeah, I, I always like work by like short term goal and long term goal. And yeah. I mean, as soon as I st start doing triathlon in maybe 2004, mm. I was like, I want an Olympic medal. That's the first thing I thought when I start doing wow. this. Wow. And after like junior worlds, when I won, I was like, okay, now next step is to qualify. So I have four years to qualify for London. Yeah. And I, I set goals like, okay, in 2011, you have to like race WTS being the top 10 in the world. Yeah. I finished, I think for my first season, maybe 10 for 11, something. Wow. So they picked me for Olympics for 2012. And I was like, yeah. okay, now you have to make the Olympics, got close to the top 10, finish 11th. And I was like, now the next step is getting a medal in Rio, what I failed. But I was like, yeah, four more years and you get it. Yeah. So yeah. I always work by like short terms to my big goal I had since uh, yeah. 15 years now. So it's kind of good because every morning you wake up and you know why you wake up. And yeah. you just have to like plan the things, put the small steps to yeah. this. Yeah. And it makes your life really easier. <laughs> if if you can achieve it <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but i mean it's good I, i think it's really good to just know where you want to go yeah just, i mean just don't wake I up mean, and i mean i i really i really remember i didn't race in a world in hamburg but i remember you were there i i don't know who won uh, uh, and Raphael and I thought, second. yeah so i was i remember you saying um the interview that time And I, I remember I was saying like, yeah, these guys, like they're gonna do like in seniors medals, mm -hmm. you know, or be Olympic champion and stuff. So I really remember you from, from that time. So I was just swimming, but I already watched all this stuff. So I was following. So I really remember it was funny. Yeah. yeah we had really and so I'm not there. really surprised that you became world champion mm -hmm. and it took to, till 2019. It's pretty, I, I would say maybe it would come earlier, but it's it's pretty crazy that that actually you you consistent, you pursue and you didn't give up and it, the, the title come or your, your goal, whatever yeah. it is, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's... It's even, I think, cooler that it came so late. Yeah. As, as would come really early. Like, yeah, probably you, you can appreciate it much more now. Yeah. Like I'm like... After after 2016, after Olympics, to, to be honest, I almost quit. Like I yeah. went back home after Rio, and I just yeah. sat in my couch and saying, "Okay, what I'm doing is I don't I don't want to do this. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to race for a medal and finish seventh because I'm not good enough. So yeah. should I have to quit or what I have to do? And I was like, No, I mean, you were seventh on a bad day, 30 seconds from the podium. So it's not like Is it really good? It's, it's, not, it's not impossible to get a medal. Yeah. It's not like, I don't know, you're seventh with five minutes. I mean, yeah. it's 30 seconds every four years that you have to get better. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to try four more years. I, I'm sure I can do it. I'm convincing myself I can do it. Yes. So I'm not gonna, I'm not lying to myself. I'm just saying, okay, if you train, good. You have four years to become like, in the podium of the series, world champion, and then getting a medal. I yeah. mean, it's not, it's sport, it's not math, but yes. there is steps that you yeah. know that gonna, yeah. that's gonna bring you to this. It's like a statistics. If you get world champion one year before, you yeah. have quite a high got, chance yeah, to, to win the medal or... So, uh, yeah, that's, 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 I mean, 
I, I say it like for me it's making the things easier yeah. just, just saying I'm waking up in the morning okay I'm training with the best of the world with one I mean not one I think for me the best coach of the world yeah. just telling me what I have to do to achieve my goals and I'm doing whatever he's asking me to do I'm doing this and I'm trying to do it the best I could and trying to pay attention to the small details everything I can get I'm spending tons of times on the forum to see whatever is new about like I don't know bikes or oh, what really? so yeah yeah. I'm, yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm wasting a lot of my time like trying to save watts and energy oh, really? yeah, yeah so I need I need to spend more time on this as I well mean, really, really <laughs> on top of, this, of these things <laughs> But um, yeah, it's like, by the end, it's more like a game, like saying, okay, what can I yeah. do better? It's, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. an obsession because, I mean, if I want to do something, if I want to have a cheat meal or whatever, I will do it and I'm mm, not feeling yeah. guilty about this. Yeah. But it's but more, in, it's in more a healthy exciting, way, you know? In, in a healthy yeah, way, yeah. like... It's more exciting to say, yeah. okay, yeah, I want to do better. I want, I want to do something better. Well, how can I yeah. be better? So it's, it's really, like, motivating, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it reminds me like uh, I talked to Eden brother Michael yeah. and he told me when we were talking about the uh, Norwegian guys and they said the same thing like you said like it's almost like they playing like a like a game like a computer game like what the skills you can do even better yeah. so you just play it like a it's like a computer game almost yeah, it's they really they bad. feel like a computer game it's funny to that's why it, as Taylor said, um, sometimes we're watching my race, bad race or good races, mm. just to say, oh, here, like my my position on the group wasn't good. I should yeah. have one or two spots better for this yeah. corner. I should have taken this line so yeah. I will notice this for next year yeah. for the same race, that this yeah. line on the corner is better. And I sometimes like, it's funny, sometimes I'm watching people racing and how they act. Mm. And how they act when just before they got dropped mm. to like having something say, oh, if he's doing mm. this, I just need to push harder and we get dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really like it's really funny to really yeah. watch everything. And That's, I I'm uh, watching also all the results, like everything. Really? Everything. Like a, a junior a junior African Cup woman, I'm gonna watch the results. Really? Yeah, yeah. Everything, no way. All the splits and yeah, I'm watching everything. <laughs> Why? It's really funny. I mean you you can see people because sometimes you're just racing people you, you don't really know yeah, or something yeah, yeah. and it's funny to see how many people like it's really like recurrent some some guys that crash on mm -hmm. the bike and i'm just like when i see them on the group i'm like okay don't stay next to them yeah. and it's like stuff like this some some like juniors coming or like it's really funny to see like splits by laps also mm -hmm. on the run to see mm -hmm. if some someone will faint or not yeah, like yeah. i mean i remember when alexi came to the to the circuit that's yeah. the first thing I saw. I was like, okay, EAAF, what is split? What the split per lap on every race he did? Wow. Is he more fainted? Is he more like, can he change rhythm? Yeah. Can he whatever? So you, yeah. you, you learn about people. I watch his races on yeah. YouTube. I, and I, then yeah. you have this experience. You, you build this experience from watching these races. And then your intuition in the races is much better, like, as you said, like in a in a bike, like okay, this guy because you already see thousand times yeah, in, yeah. in a in a telly or that that he made some mistakes or he's not good rider or this guy always attacks. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you exactly know the in, it's like an intuition. Then it's yeah, better yeah. intuition what you should do. Yeah, right? and, the, and there is so many guys that you know that they will push really hard before transition to be like first or second, and they have safe wheels to stay in. Yeah. So I mean, it's. You know, you know it because you, because you're doing races and you have the experience, but also like watching, watching races and learning, learning yeah. things, and you know, just watching how people like jump on the bike at transition, and you, you see, okay, if I'm behind him, no, I need to run all around him and yeah. jump after. Yeah. That's things you, you, when you're in the race, you win the race, you're just like, oh, okay, I'm gonna publish something on Instagram. Yeah, the people going to stay on me uh, I mm. did good and you will think okay I did super good I was really good mm. but you 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 made mistakes you yeah. always do so, so you always learn even after good race yeah, you, yeah you're yeah. trying like I mean I mean yesterday obviously I won the race yeah. and 
the first thing I was on triathlon live trying to refresh as soon as they put the video <laughs> online. So they put yeah. it at like one in the morning and I oh, watched really? it at one in the morning. Really? To watch like, because I okay. still did some mistakes and I was like, yeah. okay, this thing you should have done it better or this thing you should have yeah. done it different. And, but you, yeah, you always yeah. learn. You win, you lose, but you always learn something. Yeah. You, you, you always learning like what you did wrong and, and also what you did. So what, what do you... If I can ask, what did you learn from yesterday race? Uh, like during the bikes, when when the second group catch us, I think after six or eight k, I got a bit like I don't know unfocused, and yeah. I was at the back and I had to yeah. push. I also watched my power files and yeah, check that. okay, yeah, so the data. I, I put the video, the power files, and I saw that I had to like put more watts in the second lap, yeah. in some corners, and then on the run, I also like we have to do like a left and right and on the first yeah. like lap i wasn't that efficient on, the, mm. on this first left and right and i saw sometimes that mario was maybe half a meter behind me i should have pushed more maybe or you know it's a lot yeah, of, yeah yeah lot yeah of yeah things lots of you, things you can yeah, do yeah, yeah. Put a little bit better it's just some stuff that you that that you learn and yeah you yeah. just you just probably I would say just receive the information, yeah, you absorb, absorb, but and not. Then it's gonna yeah. be a flash during the race. Saying, yeah. Okay, I, I yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but it, it it has to be really instinctive because if you have to think about it, for me, you're too late. Yes. Yeah. You, it you has can. to. Be, it has to be just like, okay, that's what I have to do. Yeah. Not oh, okay, it happened, but uh, oh, no, too late. Yeah. It's just that it it has to be part of you. Yeah. Exactly. It's yeah, it's really interesting what you're saying because it makes perfect sense that as as I said already, that you, because you watch it a thousand times and you yeah, said yeah. like because if you watch it just once or uh you don't watch anything, you would think during the race and already the race is going. Yeah. So it's too late. And because you watch it like maybe like a thousand times or a hundred times or whatever, many times. You already like the in, like I'm saying intuition because that's coming from the receiving the mm. information. Yeah, it it comes really naturally, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's it, and I mean that's why also I'm trying to like not teaching. I don't like this word, but like yeah. transmit to yeah, tell yeah, her yeah. because she is like pretty new, and yeah. sometimes like I'm watching a race and I and I saw she is doing mistakes. I mean, really a few for how new she is. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, yeah, she like a race for like Hamburg for me. She should have been in the podium for the mistakes yeah. she did, and she knows yeah. what she did. Did did, did you went onto the uh, the wall screaming in the wall? Oh, that was in the relay. Uh, that was in the relay? Yeah. <laughs> I know not to pick the right side of the pontoon for the relay yeah. now, but um, yeah, I made some mistakes in Hamburg. But some of them were just like a matter of I couldn't get my bike into the, you know, the, the rack. The, the rack, like yeah. That. Those are things that like you can't really practice, but like you can just try to be more focused, but yeah. sometimes you just can't. You have to spend bike. one hour after the race. And going in the rug, yeah. going in yeah. the rug, going in the rug. <laughs> but other things are like, oh, I should have put like, you know, practice putting my feet in these shoes a little bit more before or something like that. Because I think the difference from, you know, the place I got in the the podium was yes. like very, transition. It yeah, was like it's literally just, just my transition. And because I can get the bike in the rack and I can put my shoes in the, on as quickly as like I should have. Um, yeah. I lost, you know, a, a podium position. So I think, like, recognizing these things, I've been able to work on them in other races. And um, obviously not the, like, putting the bike in the rack, but I'm a bit more, like, focused <laughs> when I'm in transition now. And um, now I have a, a little bit different shoes that are easier to put on. So yeah. so things like that have, have helped. And, and for me, these little things are important because... You know, now that I'm, I've gotten to this point where I'm like, you know, top four in the world. I, I think it's like all these little that's the little real attention the, the details, details that's is gonna is gonna count the most, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, before, I never really thought of like these little details. I think it was more of a big picture thing. Yeah. And now, I really have to pay attention to these things. And yeah. So, like he said, or he like looks up. Uh, information on forums about like saving watts like 
I'm not quite at that level yet, but yeah, I'm still like, yeah. you know, paying attention to these little mistakes that I'm making and figuring yeah, but, out ways but to Yeah, that's why you, you have him, so he can <laughs> yeah. transfer you that, yeah. this information and put special <laughs> special oil on your chain. Yeah, no, but I, I think she's, she's really doing good. I mean, yeah. uh, that's what I told her. I mean, there is one of my favorite sentences there is all these solutions. If there is no solution, mm -hmm. that means there's no problem. Mm -hmm. And she was struggling with a bike position, a bike fit and everything. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, who's the bike fitter you trust? This guy, okay, call him. He take the plan now, he comes now. If mm -hmm. we have to pay, we pay, but mm -hmm. this has to stop. You have to be good on your bike, yes, feel good on your feel bike, good, right? yeah. how many cases you want a day and don't have yeah. any sore, whatever. Yeah. And that's what she did in Flagstaff. Like the guy came just for her, fit her, and now it's perfect. Yeah. And okay, it's, it's what it takes to be professional. It, it can't bother you one more day. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to wake up in the morning and say, oh, I'm gonna ride a bike, I don't feel good on. Mm. No, it's not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's these things that... You, you, don't, you don't push the, the yeah, problems away. You don't you, say... You solve them yeah, you don't straight say, oh, away. Go, I get, yeah, okay. If it, if, I mean, money or bothering people doesn't have to be like a limit because you want to be world champion or Olympic champion yeah you have to it's not bothering you have to do, yeah, people yeah, like yeah. to help the, have to the, the people who you. dreams and a, big right yeah, and, a yeah. career, and career is so short that mm -hmm. when you'll be done it's it's not gonna be time to it's true feel, feel good on your bike I mean do it now do it never but yeah. solve the problems and it's with everything yeah, yeah. it's yeah. helpful to have him to like force me to do these things because I, I don't like like bothering people. I just like yeah, to do yeah. things on my own, but yeah. I definitely like need help in some situations yeah. like with a bike fit or like a new saddle or something like that. So um, sometimes I just need him to like tell me to do it. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, she's like really nice with people sometimes. Yeah. Also like saying, oh, I feel bad. I'm like, no, you're not feeling bad. This guy, <laughs> bad. No, but I, I told her like, if you will not be like fourth in the world, this guy will never text you, will never call you. I mean, it's hard to say, but sometimes you're just doing business. Yeah. It's not about being friendly with a guy. Yeah. It's just about, okay, this guy wants you to do one day at his bike shop, he pays you. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's no matter of, yeah, he knows a friend of my cousin or whatever. No, it doesn't work. I mean, this guy, <laughs> he asks you because you are who you are. And it has a cost, the cost that you yeah. spend hours at training. Yeah. So that's how it works. And then you, like, you don't, if you don't perform, he's not going to call you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. I remember we had so. this talk the first time in, uh, I think that was in Super League with Rafael Nadal. Mm -hmm. And he came to see us and he, and he was paid or whatever to, care, to come seven minutes. Wow. So he went seven minutes, <laughs> like shake hands, take selfies. And, and his agent was like, okay, and he left. And she was a bit like, oh, it's not like really, I don't know. Yeah. It was really like... It seemed very like artificial. And I'm like, yeah, okay, it's like, artificial. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, but this guy is a superstar. Like seven mm, minutes yeah. of his time as a cost. Because that's seven minutes when he's not training, resting, or with his family. Yeah. So it has a cost. That's it. He's, yeah. not, he's not my friend. He's not your friend. He's yeah. not their friend. He's just a guy that, is, that has an image. His image is his business. Yeah. And he's selling it. That's yeah. sad to he, say. He, he could spend more time with his family. Or, yeah, and that's sad so, to say yeah. that if he would have been doing like French fries at McDonald's, nobody would pay him to come. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. it. And his time is just an attention. Like everyone would would like to call him for yeah. seven minutes. Yeah, that's it. And he would have to spend seven minutes <laughs> with everyone. everywhere, yeah, with yeah. everyone around the world, you know. So that's that's the thing for free. she is like. Yeah. Still, she, she is all this scared about bothering people, mm -hmm. like, like sp having to spend time with people or all people, or something. I'm like, it, like, yeah, it's nice to be friendly with people and everything. You can be nice, you can help people, but your performance first. Yes. That's the target you have to fix on your life. That's the performance. If you perform, you're happy. If you're happy, you perform. That's how it works, I think. And Sometimes you can't like say, ah, okay, but I need to have like a dinner with a friend and okay, I'm gonna sleep late. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, if he's really your friend, just say, okay, you come to my home, <laughs> we have a dinner at 6.45, but I will need to go to bed at like 10 yeah, because yeah, I need yeah. to train tomorrow at eight. Yeah, yeah. And I hope you understand because you're my friend. 
Mm. And that's how it works. I mean, so that's that's a bit yeah. that's a bit hard, I think, for her to learn this, like coming yeah. from not like sports from a long time. Yeah. But yeah, it's. I think it's what and, I learned. And also, also maybe the difference is because you're doing this for such a long time, yeah. and you you're trying to achieve for a really long time, so you know how much you have energy and you went all through the like hard work i'm not saying like you didn't have any hard work <laughs> it's just like also lots of fails and it takes like up yeah. and downs and you you know how much it's cost that failures and to to get up again and mentally to get get again and all yeah. this stuff makes you who you are now and that's why it's probably you saying her like maybe the, his experience maybe yeah, you would have to from yeah, yeah, yeah. His from his experience so, and I mean, from his life yeah. i have to learn from his experiences yeah, sometimes yeah. because i don't have as much time to you know yeah you know fail and learn from these mistakes because yeah. i entered into the sport so much later yeah so it's a good thing i just need to like you save more much more time <laughs> yeah you save so, so much more time yeah. you had more time with the with the friends with the family yeah 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 we always we would be the same yeah, yeah, but no i i i definitely know that you have to put hard work in under the table it's, it's nothing for free yeah yeah so, and sometimes it's just hard to say say no to things that you want to do and, yeah you know just things like this yeah. <laughs> so what was about the next of the rest of the season? Are you doing both a uh, Super League ride? Yeah, mm-hmm. French Grand Prix. French Grand Prix. And yeah. both Super League Jersey, Malta. Jersey and Malta Super yeah. League, yeah. yeah. And then we're done, yeah. 20 for October holidays. Yeah. yeah. Hey, where where do you go if I can ask? Uh, we we had this chat on the bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to stay around Europe. I don't, I don't want to travel that travel much anymore. Travel too long. But, yeah. But I don't know. I, I had a had some ideas like really nice but we were supposed to be in the US in November and it's not gonna happen anymore so yeah. I have to like regroup more around Europe I don't know maybe yeah. Corsica or somewhere would be nice okay. yeah. that's little island next to Italy <laughs> <laughs> he knows Europe <laughs> I'm more like about okay uh, take your luggage we're, we're going tomorrow <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, more, I'm, more, I'm more like this yeah. she's more about talking uh, what are we doing in December? Where are we going to try? December, <laughs> no, okay, I'm too much planning. <laughs> I need yeah. a little bit more planning, yeah. Yeah. But the element of surprise will be Even nice. Even when not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, like, I'll be surprised where we're going, not, like, when we're going. Yeah. Like, that would be a surprise for me, too. I, we, we are, with my with my wife, it's the same. Like, yeah. always surprise her with some, plan, <laughs> with some plans. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I want wanted to ask about the the qualification in Tokyo. Like you, I don't know your qualification from federation. If you, if with this uh, season you are you are done or um, or you have to still perform something uh, next year. Basically, we had one criteria that was winning the test event. That yeah. was the only one. Okay. Yeah, and and you didn't want to do it. Be- uh, because you you were yeah, I didn't want to take the risk. You take the risk I for mean, the world. Doing a travel, uh, racing, uh, obviously individual and relay in the heat, humidity, yeah. uh, swimming in a uh, water that we water we don't, don't know. Really know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was too much risk. Yes. Like being so close to a world title. Yeah. Uh, so I prefer to like stay in altitude even more that the four Spaniard weren't in Tokyo and they were like second, third and fourth behind me. So I didn't yeah. want to like take the of risk. Course. So I stayed home and we also had like second rank criteria. That's what they mm. call it. And um, basically it's top three Olympic ranking, top three at the series. So I fit mm-hmm. these two criteria, but yeah, um, they will announce, I think one or two names. It's pretty tough year. criteria. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crazy. With, with, the, with the team we are, yeah. like, I mean, we wow. are, wow, we are yeah. like four guys yeah. that can win, almost win a World Series. Anytime, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, Dorian it's, won this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's, yeah. It's, it's pretty hard, but yeah, I will see. <laughs> they, will, they will put one or two names in the table by the end of the year, I think. I hope to be, okay. I hope to be in, in this one. Of two, course, yeah. yeah. But, they keep the secret for now. So. Okay, yeah, it's not o- anything official, right? And no, not yet. Yeah, not yeah. yet. Yeah. But for them, it's a bit more complicated. Yeah. It's a bit more you, you're supposed to be top eight or 
Yeah, it was, was a bit complicated in Tokyo. If someone Tokyo. podiumed, then okay. a second person could qualify if they were in the top okay. eight. But if no one podiumed, then you just had to be in the top eight. So okay. with the, the crash that Katie was in, yes, um, like I'm pretty sure we all thought like she was for sure going to podium there. Yeah. So it was like her getting a podium and someone else getting top yeah. eight. And when she crashed in the race, like... I actually wasn't feeling very well like mm. the night before and the morning <laughs> during the race even I thought about pulling out before we started the bike um, but then when she crashed I was like well like I have to earn this spot for her like she can't do it anymore and yeah you know she's by far you know the most deserving person so mm -hmm. um, hopefully our breakaway can stick and like I can just manage the rest of this race um, yes. despite like not you know being a little like sick and like my stomach was pretty upset um, but yeah I just I couldn't do it on the run and um, um, within the last hundred meters I was just I felt so horrible <laughs> that like um, I was passed and I lost that yeah. spot by less than 10 seconds. Oh, really? So. On, on, the, on the last few hundred meters? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, so it was my worst race of the season and it was when I needed it wow. most to count. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was a pretty upsetting for me. I mean, I, I know if I had been, you know, feeling well, I would have 100% earned that spot mm. and so I think that's something I've been struggling with since that race mm. like I've been you know pretty down about it um, but uh, I also feel horrible for Katie because I think she deserves out of all of us to like know that she She's has earned this spot qualified. a year out yeah. and now she um, she has to wait and we I mean we both technically have to wait um, until our next qualification criteria so so you don't know what is it's, next qualification the next, criteria? The next so one know. is Yokohama. So okay. um, I don't remember. It's either top eight or a podium in Yokohama. I forgot. Oh, it's, but only it's one crazy. person can qual auto qualify now for the second spot. Oh, for the second. The so second summer US is already qualified. So right now, who, summer, who, uh, summer is qualified. Summer, because she finished eight. Six, yeah, she finished eighth before eight? the disqualification, but six, okay. Six, yeah. so. But also, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know if you can count because it was so drawn or something. Yeah, because I lots think, of countries I didn't take it. So. Yeah. I think our criteria That's crazy. should have been rewritten, but I'm yeah. not the one writing the criteria. Yeah. So um, it's because kind of unfortunate that you know, even in the criteria, there wasn't like if a major crash happens that you know this no longer counts that's what like the Brits have in their yeah. criteria for instance um, so or I think they do at least I don't remember what country it is but um, we have it yeah there's a bunch of like yeah. contingency plans that mm -hmm. wasn't written on our criteria so it's it's kind of frustrating situation for us to be in um, and I think that's why I've been pretty you know down about it but yeah um, but you perform su such a great year, so yeah. So that's people, that's reassuring. People, people see it and yeah, yeah. You've done so, so well. as long as either you know, you know, Katie or I qualify um, in Tokyo, the next spot will be discretion, and hopefully mm -hmm. that goes to one of us too. But, yeah. Um, you never know what can happen. Like Kirsten's been injured all year, so she yeah. can come back, and she's always a very yeah. strong, consistent athlete. Yeah. And it's just like a pretty strong you group have, of women you have, to yeah. compete against. So. US and and Great Britain has oh gosh, crazy strong yeah, females. Yeah. Yeah. Top like, ten is like five five it's almost. Crazy yeah. because <laughs> the caliber of the race is just gonna go down so much when you don't have, you know, yeah. um, all of the US women and all of the, the Great Britain women. Yeah. So um, there'll if, only be three from each country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, it's a tough situation to be in, but I think it also like raises the bar for all of us. Whereas, like, instead of just you know wanting to like be satisfied with being like I don't know at a certain level, we want to be even better, like the best in our country. Um, so I think we, in some ways, kind of push each other. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I was. Uh, I wanted to ask, I don't know if I asked already, but but why do you think uh, you had such a consistent year, like the most consistent, like since 
like last year you you started really well when when you uh, came to the group with Joel mm. but before you had some also some injuries yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and but you had like some amazing results but then like some not so not so good I, I shouldn't say some, something like this because he's always <laughs> no, better no, than mine <laughs> <laughs> but I mean from from the from the outside point yeah, of yeah, view yeah. you know I, I think <clears throat> the good thing is that I stay away from injury since I draw I join Joel yeah. and basically uh, the whole squad I think crossed stay away from injury for a long time I mean Mario yeah. never has been injured for his yeah. whole career yeah. he just had like some crazy. back problem earlier this year but still finished second in the world yeah so yeah like I mean we all stay healthy because Joel really managed well the energy and the, the loading so it's, it's it's really good and that's I think why I can have like a good winter and stay pretty consistent and do all my my session I did not skip any mm -hmm. any training Nothing. because I was always yeah. like feeling good and in good form and is it especially like... with the running like you're not doing that much mileage yeah, or... yeah, yeah. I, I mean coming from <clears> the <throat> running training group I was running maybe 160 170 yeah. a week so that's I mean, pretty high risk of the injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you're coming back down to 90 to 100, 100 per week. But you're running is, better. Yeah, I'm which running is, faster. Yeah. And which is still, I think I'm the guy that runs the most in the group still oh, now. Oh, really? But because I'm coming from a so high mileage that for me, 80k per week is like a really like, easy Nothing, week. yeah. So it's, yeah, I'm, I, I think staying injury free like really help me being consistent and mm. not pushing too hard at training also i don't mm -hmm. have to dig really deep so i can like like bounce back really easy when i need to recover for three or four days and race in the weekend i can like yeah. be in shape really really like more like easier i would say it's it's really easier for my coach to like set up my form mm -hmm. and uh, yeah i think it's both this like staying injury free and not not racing every single training yeah so yeah. that that brings you the the world champion title yeah and that's i think it. so i mean yeah. it's it's just that um yeah for me a bad race is sixth yeah this year. it's crazy yeah <laughs> it was uh, which was the worst uh, for the you the worst was leeds uh, yeah yeah I, I was sick actually the week before and wow. didn't feel really good but you still managed to be six yeah, yeah, on the six. super hard course and yeah, yeah, with yeah, a competitive so level and stuff. That's what that's what we say after the race with Joe saying, okay, I felt horrible and I finished sixth and when I feel good, I'm like third, second or third. So yeah. it's it's pretty good when you start a race and you feel like this, like saying, okay, if I don't feel good, I'm going to be sixth. It's not yeah. too bad. <laughs> so yeah, it's really good because before I was like, okay, if I don't feel good, I will DNF the race. And yeah. so now you just like, training every day you feel good every day because you never put you in a in a hole so mm -hmm. you're just like oh, okay i feel good i'm gonna race this weekend and <laughs> it's just like you're training with the best of the world so if you train with them and you can keep up with them it's just say okay yeah this race this weekend is not gonna be faster than the training we just did because yeah. this guy has gonna are gonna be at the front yeah. so it's just the race pace we do on the training yeah. is the race pace that's going to be on Saturday yeah. race because these guys so you, are the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to like, if you're not training like before with them, you would say like, maybe you have to, you would think maybe less or even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes even more you have to go harder. I remember. Because yeah. you think. I remember sometimes before I was at training and can't handle the pace. My coach asked me and I was like, wow, I'm not going to be fast enough for the race and it's not good and but maybe these guys on the same day at the same session would be at the same speed as me but yeah. you never know because you don't train with them yeah so just training i remember we trained in flagstaff and it's like 2300 meters above sea level and yeah. it's like only trace don't really have like road to to run and we mm -hmm. did my session and we were like three three or five three or seven like full gas of course, and the, and this <laughs> that's thing, so high, so yeah, hard. But, but this thing is that if I would have done that by myself, I would have said, "Wow, it's not fast enough." Yeah. But we were all together, yeah. so who's gonna who's gonna run faster Saturday than us? Nobody. Yeah. And you just say, yeah. "Okay, I'm just with the best of the world, so it means I'm not." So you can because, relax yeah, with, with yeah. what you're doing, yeah, and that, you can believe exactly. it's good. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. I remember, 
I was always pushing like October, November, wanted to like straight being strong and doing like a 10K on the road to test myself, to see where yeah. I was and everything. But I mean, when you're doing session in February next to Mario, you're just like, this guy is the best runner yeah. of the world. So. You don't need to test yourself. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to yeah. test yourself. If, you, if you're next to him and you feel good, yeah. it means you're not too bad. Yeah. So that's 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 really a that's big different big difference and a yeah. big like advantage like mentally and to be like really quiet. That's cool. That's really yeah. cool to hear. Yeah. It's the same for you probably, <laughs> you, because you had also I, I I was meaning for you both you had really consistent yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think for me it's a bit different. I don't have someone like that. Like that's I'm not that's like, competitive. You know, yeah. But um, but I think. I think I've just been consistent in training for such a long time and I've figured out these like little things where it's like I'm taking better care of myself, I'm getting more sleep, I'm, you know, eating more like better quality food mm-hmm. and, like at the right times of the day and these little things in combination with like, you know, just doing the training that my coach gives me, I think um, that is translated into like not only consistent year this year, but if you look at like since I started with my coach, yeah, I think my first year with him I was twelfth in the in the WTS ranking. Wow. And then I yeah, the next year I was eighth, which was last year. This year I was fourth. So um So but, you're consistent so been, all three I've years. Been really. Consistent but yes. like in, in, in a, a different re- level, a little like bit a level. Realistic, yeah. uh, a time frame. So, you know, yeah. I, I started at one place and I've like slowly worked my way yeah way up to you know fourth which is pretty cool because um i never thought i would you know achieve this so so quickly like within three years but um i've set goals for myself and i've learned from my mistakes and i've had to do these little things right um i think the first year i was a bit like i got sick a bit more Mm -hmm. Um, i was learning how to travel and i was learning how to you know eat enough to so, fill my training so do you like do you this. travel a different way now I'm did sorry? you did you learn something from the traveling how you can tra- travel different traveling before the race different. Oh, business yeah. business <laughs> business it's worth it yeah. <laughs> business class is very nice but i can't yeah. quite afford it all the time but yeah oh wow it makes well a well not, not, now it's like different when you like so high ranking athlete so you can yeah, afford yeah. it which is which is like super like super crazy for me when we were traveling from montreal to hamburg uh like mario javi and alaza that was with you were top four guys right but i didn't know how you travel but i i was traveling with them and they all went with the with the economy and i oh, was really? like super surprised because mario three times world champion mm. javi five times world champion uh, Fernando is is pretty close to be in the yeah. podium this year, and for traveling from one week to another week, like oh, uh, it's crazy that you see like this sport has these legends like you by you Brownies Mario, the traveling economy from races to the race, from you know from the oceans is like like this this sport deserves like these yeah. heroes deserves much more you know like. I was I felt really upset like for them you know like like yeah. you, you see as you said Nadal uh, he's, yeah. he's flying with his jet or yeah. I mean it's, it's pretty crazy that the tri- tri- triathlon doesn't have still that recognition that deserves I think yeah it's, yeah. it's really bad. sad for me to mm. see I think I think we're growing we grow I think, I think it's yeah. good I mean from from what I see, from what, when I start triathlon, is that before it was only like about the sponsor you can get, but it was really like about sponsors around triathlon, like bike yeah. brands, running brands, yeah. or whatever. And now you have some like people that putting money from like other things. We saw yeah. the brownies with Samsung. Yeah. I mean, now there is like Bahrain putting money. And yeah. I think it's kind of making the things growing up. Yeah. It takes time for sure. But I, I think we're on the good way. Yeah, we're on the so. good way. I think that, yeah, I mean, thanks to Mario, Ravi, the Brownies, all these guys that are really yeah. like, I mean, icons for triathlon. Like, yeah. really, oh, I mean, for me, the, the best is Jan Frodeno. He's doing like yeah. 
great job. I mean, with the marketing and incredible, stuff. Yeah. Incre incredible, like athletes, Olympic gold, two times Kona winner. And this guy, if you look at his social medias and what he's doing, everything he's doing is so professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for me, is yeah. to be honest, huh, I mean, communication wise, a big inspiration. Yeah. Like this guy, you check his Instagram, every photo, every photo is like perfect. perfect. Yeah. Even the caption is like, yeah. Just catching you, but not saying, hey, I need likes. It's just like, yes. okay, blah, 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 talking a bit with the people. He's, he's authentic. He's still authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, <laughs> Even when he's like doing things, I think even like when you see it's like a pure advertisement, you can feel like this guy likes what he's doing. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's only partnering with brands that I think he really respects and he really likes. Yeah. And he would say no to a brand if he doesn't like the, like the vibes of the yeah, brands. Yeah. But this guy, I mean, he's with like brands like Mercedes or like yeah. he's, a, he's an ambassador for Canyon yeah. for this brand. So you're like, wow. He, he knows what he's doing and he maybe say no to some money just to like yeah. keep this these vibes around him yeah. that people just say okay I want to be next to Jan Frodeno you know? I want to be next yeah. to these sponsors yeah he, he keeps himself as a, as a uh, like a strong brand yeah 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 like, and yeah. I think that's the guy that really understand him because I f understand it and I think he likes it <clears throat> and he's, yeah. he's more like okay how can I can I grow my business but not thinking about money just thinking about I don't want to sell my image for nothing or for yeah. like bullshit brands. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people are really like not interested in it. Like yeah. they don't care about social media or about their appearance yeah. or whatever. But I think this guy for like every single triathlete that want to like develop something around his career yeah. is a good inspiration. And I think the two guys I've seen doing that is Laurent Vidal and Jan. I think mm. that's the two guys I take as example for Mm. managing both the career like a sport career and the business like parts i think they're really good for this yeah 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 you you mentioned laurent vidal and also with the in a interview you did for itu yeah, yeah when you said you did it also for him like it's, it was pretty pretty special that you say that and yeah i mean laurent um he was big inspiration for me i grew up with him like uh, watching him racing Beijing 2008 Olympics and uh, after it kind of helped me yeah I mean when I was in New Zealand uh, racing the classic Mulula by New Plymouth yeah 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 I was like okay come home I'll help you like he teach me my first English words and everything oh really yeah so that's wow yeah that was pretty good and I was there like uh, when he had his first like problems uh, yeah I remember we did a running session and he was like oh something's wrong and mm -hmm. I was like, wow, like panicking. I was maybe 20 years old by the oh, time, really? 22 or something. And I was like, wow, what's happening? And yeah, it's sad. And I thought he would be like, and I still think he would be a really good like mentor for people. Yeah. Like, for young he, athletes yeah. trying to develop because he's a guy that you can debate with him. Like you can have a, not an argument, but you can have a good talk. And yeah. he's like really curious and really like, aware about everything happening and yeah. he's like a, re a really good guy I think <clears throat> to, to talk with and to if you want to learn things about track and even more about life I think he's a really good guy and yeah, yeah he was every time I had like a question uh, I was like straight texting him and say oh, what do you think about this what do you oh, think really? about that and he yeah. was always good advice I think yeah. and yeah I think we all said that he's not there anymore but um, yeah I'll miss him for sure and I think yeah. he, he could like make something really good for track yeah. and right now and help help the people and i think he was a good also like speaker for for you yeah. athletes like sometimes saying oh what you're doing is like he, I, he was really rude sometimes but i think that's he how was really talk. like authentic and very yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like saying truth yeah yeah, yeah yeah but he was like sometimes i, I remember <laughs> that was in a that was 2011 at uh at Europeans, what we there was David Horst, Lauren Vidal, and me, and we the three of us had like a really bad race, like we yeah. got destroyed by everyone. And I remember the, the high performance director was like, Wow, well, guy, in three weeks is the test event, what you fucking do, and you're like mm -hmm. almost last at the Europeans, what you mm -hmm. think you're gonna do. And it's like stand up, he was like, Okay, listen, I'm bad today, but do I have to be good today, or do you want me to be good in three weeks and in one year at the Olympics? Yeah. And the high performance director was like, okay, I trust you. You'll show me. 
And I think at the test event he finished like fifth or fourth yeah. in the Olympic. They, they did like fourth. Yeah, he was fifth. in London, right? Yeah, in London. And you finished tenth, and you made eleven. Uh, you 11. finished tenth at the test event, yes. Yeah, yeah. And so that I was like, what this guy? Like, first he has balls, and second yes. he's like he thinks what he's doing, and yeah. he, he believes yeah. in what he's doing, and I think that's yeah. the most important. And I was. And I was like, the first time I really saw him like, like this, and I said, "Wow, this guy, yeah. he knows what he's doing." And that, yeah. that was that was pretty cool. I remember yeah, he he helped me also quite when I was 2012 in in Christchurch. I was training, mm-hmm. so I was training a little bit with them, uh, swimming a little bit, rub, uh, cycling, and not so much running because I stay quite far. But I was with Dave, David okay. House, yeah. and. So, and he was really helping me and yeah, he was really, really cool guy. And also when he finished his career, as you said, he was, he was that developing this, this coaching thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as you said, mentor, he was, I was, I was really looking forward to what, where we will go. Mm. And unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's pretty yeah, sad. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, but he, he left an amazing mark and, yeah. and such an inspiration for for um, for lots of athletes. Yeah, still. yeah. I'm be I'm bit sad that the new generation of the French athlete did not really yeah they like didn't met like him. met him and yeah. know, know him because I think it would be good for them. Like he was a he was the first guy to say okay. If I have to train 35 or 40 hours a week, I'll do it, and I'm not scared about doing yeah. this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes this guy is like, oh, I'm tired or oh, no, I don't want to train or oh, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And he was more about yeah. If you're not good you're not good you have to train more and he was like really like straight into it and really like blunt when he was saying something and that's what i really liked with him and um yeah i think it could be it could be good to have someone like him sometimes to talk to the young people would you like to be that person i don't know it's <laughs> hard to say huh? i mean yeah what would you like to do after after your career <sighs> did, did you think about that no not really no? maybe you open a uh, coffee, coffee that's place that's in, too long coffee place too in Girona yeah. no, there's too many <laughs> no I don't know no I, I really don't know I don't think I would coach I, I don't think I I don't know I don't think I got it maybe okay. maybe yeah. later but for, for now not really yeah but um, yeah I don't know I think I'm quite like creative I have like tons of ideas about yeah. developing products and everything okay. so I got some brands already that like want to not working for me but like giving some getting some advices from me mm-hmm. or something so okay yeah it could be could be a good start but yeah why not like doing more like i don't know working for a federation like trying to help them with like the small details that they, they don't really see because they're not athletes they're just like yeah, yeah. national coach or whatever yeah. so and also the just... generation also is changing so yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the sport like like now is different like was six years ago yeah so it's yeah. crazy to see like how it's changing with um them. you know it's funny because since i'm like performing better i'm trying to make the, the things moving a bit in my federation mm-hmm. and it's like so like a bit old school the way they think it's it's so hard to say okay we can't sleep in the ibis anymore it's yeah. too small we can't sleep good it's three days before the race I mean, yeah. these guys, they just fly, they just pay like 2,000 euros to fly business. They just yeah. train, I don't know, in Sierra Nevada, it costs them like a 100 euros to stay in altitude just before the race. And you can't tell them, okay, you stay in an IBIS, you share your room with one other, other guy because we don't want to spend money on you. You yeah. can't say that to an athlete. So it yeah. has to change. I mean, leading to a race, you have to get your own room to don't get sick, yeah. to have good sleep, yeah. to like chill out, to... I don't know, Skype your girlfriend whenever you want. Yeah, in, it's, it's like an investment. Like yeah. you invest the athlete and he might don't give you back straight away, but maybe in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to make the <clears> thing moves. I'm, I'm like, yeah, this guy, they have like, I don't know, they have like a funding for the year. But ask them if maybe, I don't know, they prefer you to pay like for a business class to go to the test event or to mm-hmm. go back from the test event because it was only two weeks before Lausanne. And that's the thing they don't really like think about because yeah. they're just like, Okay, we'll book the ticket, or oh, this ticket is cheaper. Okay, yeah. that's fine. And you're like, no, but when you're athletes, these small details, you have to think about it. And yeah. if you don't 
tell them this, yeah. it's it's hard for them to think about it. And they they need to trust and listen the athlete. That's it. Because they live the the whole thing and yeah, yeah, and I mean, sometimes they were like, and you know, in France, we love to have like this lunch and dinner all together at yeah. 12 and at 7 and everything and I told yeah. him no stop this <laughs> okay. we, can have, we, can, we can have a dinner together it's fine because we can like plan for the day after yes. but for lunch leave the athlete alone like yes. maybe someone's gonna eat Japanese someone tired someone is gonna eat at 11.30 and one at 1 yeah. and someone is gonna ride and, like and for spe- 12 and, so yeah. and especially this, this sport is like three disciplines it's so much training yeah it's, it's really hard to structure also like lunch yeah, and yeah, breakfast yeah. with so everyone. It, it yeah. took us like a bit of time yeah. to make them understand this. But yeah, we we, we improving and we make mm. like a... That's funny because two years ago we created like an athlete commission inside the federation. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm, I'm the president of this <laughs> commission. And basically we're just saying like we have a meeting once a year and saying, okay, what was good? Because you have also to say what was good with the federation and but it's mainly what was wrong. Uh, yeah, I, I confess, yeah. but it, it can be whatever, like about the the motorbike on the French Grand Prix, like from like the, the business class yeah. or, the, or the, the rooms leading the race. So it's really good that all the athletes get like really together mm. to, to put these things and say to the Federation, OK, we want like better conditions. We want like to work like this. We want you to trust us when we ask for something. Yeah. And I think we're growing. It's it's good. But I think that's something I'm not saying I can be good at, but that's yeah. something I want to develop. Not yeah, not yeah, yeah. not necessarily in the French Federation. Yeah, we I mean I'm not married with them, but it's more like I think it's something important to have like a good link between athletes and mm. all the management around. Yeah. And this link is for me fifty percent of the time missing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's not. It's not a proper job. You can't say I'm, yeah. the, I'm the missing link. Pay me every yeah, month. Yeah, yeah. Connection. The, everyone wants to be the missing link. Huh? Yeah. The, it could be a good thing. I think to develop. Yeah. So Something I don't like know. This. That's cool. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> can Can I ask you what you'd like to do after triathlon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be a much shorter answer. <laughs> um, I'm also not interested in in coaching. I mean, I've worked with kids and you know that yeah. surf life-saving yeah. job that I did before um, which was really fun and I loved it but I went to university for architecture and I probably won't be an architect because that requires like a lot more study and uh, experience probably catching up on you know People. what I missed yeah. and tests and uh, a lot of like internships but I would like to do something that ties like creativity and sports together whether mm-hmm. that's like you know product development mm-hmm. or, like some sort of so design, design related yeah. like whether it's like I don't know designing like kids or like developing some design with like uh, helmets or bikes or something yeah. like that who knows what it will be that would but be cool I think so That's you, you probably can, the direction you can, I'll go You can in. put some product together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think we do a good job. Yeah. He's very meticulous, so I think yeah. he'll be very good at it. But yeah. um, we'll see when that time comes. I mean, our lives are constantly changing. Yeah, of, co- so. of course, of course. i just asking, like, maybe yeah. you have already some ideas or not. Yeah. I'm just curious, you know. Yeah, it would be nice to, like, obviously we've spent so much of our life doing this sport already and so it'd be nice to do something with it yes and you know maybe use my degree to a certain extent mm, so of course um yeah we'll see what happens <laughs> we also want we also want to build the ultimate bike box for travel oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> because we've never seen box. the good bike box <laughs> no like this is light this protect your bike <laughs> yeah this is easy to pack the wheels yeah. two wheels yeah we want to build the ultimate one so oh, that's, really? that's the project of my life <laughs> making yeah. the life easier to every that would be cool yeah. uh, i'll buy it we'll solve a lot of problems sure, that we've yeah, experienced yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I also think, like <laughs> easy easy to put in like you don't yeah. have to take the handle the car, everything i mean i think in the car yeah that sounds a good plan of like boxes to tick yeah but i mean i think i destroyed already 15 bike boxes <laughs> yeah. so I, I or know, or or guys in the airport yeah, destroyed yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i know what i want. i know what i don't want yeah so yeah, yeah. That's a good 
Okay, thank you very much. It was an amazing podcast to have you here. And once again, congratulations for for amazing season. Thank you. Thank and you. it was such a pleasure that you I could have talked to you and you were such an amazing guest, honestly. Thanks for having us. And yeah. good, good luck all this, this year and, and next year is the most important. So, yeah. good luck so you, to will, you will succeed. <laughs> thank you. Yeah.